All right, I'm currently on the phone with Sean Cosgrove. He's another musician that reached out about the current interview sessions. So I'm going to go ahead and give him the chance to introduce himself. Hey, my name is Sean Cosgrove. I'm 54 years old. I'm currently a guitar player. Uh, I played bass for about 30 years in a lot of different projects in the Twin Cities. Um, yeah, that's kind of my my thing. Uh, I started playing when I was about 15. I learned guitar. Um, I grew up uh, in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, lived in St. Paul all my life except for about six years in Minneapolis. All right. Okay. Well, so uh, let's go ahead and get into you know the beginning. Tell me about when you first came in contact with music. What about it kind of inspired you and made you want to pursue it? Um, I, I remember just tapping my toes along to AM radio before FM re really was kind of even a thing when I was very young. Um, listen, you know, my, my parents would listen to like Ray Charles and the Three Dog Night and uh, bands like that. Um, my mom was a big Lou Rawls fan. So there, there, there was a lot of that kind of going around, a lot of like rock and soul kind of thing. My dad was a big Aretha Franklin fan and Elvis, of course. And um, so that, that just kind of always um, got, it, it, it just, it perked my interest uh, right away. I was always loving music um i one of my one of my first kind of favorite bands where it was like oh this is my band was kiss i was i was into the theatricality of it and the makeup and it was like oh who are these guys and so it was just it was just kind of fascinating to me and i remember you know wearing my moon boots and pretending i was ace Frehley, you know and i would do like the back I would get down on my knees and then just bend backwards and play air guitar you know that was just kind of what, what i wanted to do you know and then i started then i was listening to like van halen and then all of a sudden eddie van halen was the best guitar player in the world to me and um and and then and then the fate and then it kind of went through from van halen then i started getting into real heavy stuff like metallica and i was listening to punk rock and um and then i was like i i want to i want to do this i, I want to learn how to play guitar Okay, so let's kind of touch base there. When once you started that you once you started to realize that you wanted to play guitar, what were kind of your first steps into beginning learning? Did you kind of just did you take private lessons? What was that process like for you? Okay, so I I, I went to a St. Paul Open School, which is now Open World Learning, um, and actually my thirteen year old daughter goes to that school, so that's you know so she's a, I, I'm an alumnus to the school that she goes to, but we could. Um, when you were a student, you could teach a class at, at open school. And I actually taught a creative writing class. I always wanted to be a writer too. I was into poetry and, and, and art and stuff too. But music was kind of the, you know, once, once music, the music bug hit me, I was, I was caught and it was like, the, it was my thing. And, um, so there were a couple of kids taught a class. A couple of, a couple of kids taught a guitar class and, um, we the, the other cool thing about the school is we could we could check out a guitar like you could check out a book out of the library. So we would check out guitars and we would go to their class and they would just show us through tablature and stuff some different chords. Um, so I started learning chords and some basic. I think my very first thing that I learned was "Smoke on the Water," the the riff for "Smoke on the Water," and and I was hooked as soon as I as soon as you get that as soon as you figure something out. Oh, this is so cool. You know, and then you kind of and then I kind of went on from there. OK, so once you kind of felt comfortable with the instrument and you got to that point where uh, you wanted to kind of express with it, did you start writing your own material or did you look for other bands of your peers to join? Uh, what were your next steps there? Uh, so there there were a couple of bands. Um, you know, I was I was 12 or 13, you know, and there were like established bands in our school of kids my age. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. They have they have a rock and roll band, you know, and the, one of the guitar players was just incredible. And he was one of the kids that taught the, the class. Um, so then I, I wanted a guitar uh, and, and I had a I had an acoustic guitar and it only had four strings. We, we I grew up pretty poor. 
So I was used to playing just four strings. And then there was a drummer and a guitar player in the neighborhood that I lived in, and they wanted a bass player. And I said, well, I'm, I'm used to playing just four strings, so why don't I play bass in your band? So I, I had a job at the time, and I was, um, this was later on, and I was, you know, 15 or 16 at this time. And um, I had a job, so I had my own money. So I bought a bass guitar, and I bought an amplifier. And then um, they said, well, we need a singer, too. And I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll sing. So we just had like a three-piece rock band. And uh, so I was playing bass, and I was basically the lead singer in that band as well. Okay. And so you said that, uh, you know, you were, you've been in the music scene for a couple decades. Uh, how many iterations of bands would you say that you've been in? Or has it been one band the whole time and you got lucky? <laughs> No, no, there's been probably, you know, I never really counted, but probably like eight to 10 different bands that I was, that I've been in. Um, one, one particular band I, I, I was kind of off and on with for about 20 years. Okay. And then did each of those kind of see their own successes throughout those years? Yes. Yep. We played, uh, we played almost, I, I played almost every bar that there was to play in the Twin Cities and all the different bands that I've been in. Um, and I really didn't get much out of state. Uh, we played, you know, some like barn parties in Wisconsin and that's about it. I did a very small kind of five date tour where we played in Montana and, and uh, Seattle um, and in Oregon. But um yeah, not not a whole lot of like out outside the Twin Cities stuff, you know, a little St. Cloud and stuff here and there. But um, did you guys also get into, you know, the recording studio and write songs that way? Uh, how many albums in that time do you think that you've played an instrument on that are out there somewhere now? Um, there's not a whole lot. Didn't do a whole lot of recording. There, there was one project where I had all of my bass lines done for the whole record and then there was a, a falling out between the guitar player and the lead singer and that project never, never was released for so that. Um, you know, there was a, we did like a three song EP. Um, and then there was one, one full length album that I actually recorded and produced myself with, with one of the bands I was in called dances with worms. And that was, that was the band that I, I had kind of been in off and on for 20 years. And we released that in 2007. Uh, so yeah, there's not a whole lot, and, and I'm currently working on a recording project right now. We did we just did some recording yesterday. I was gonna say, does that kind of bring us up to where you are now into your current project, or ha did more yeah. happen in between there? Okay, perfect. Yeah. So let's talk about the current project. Tell me, you know, what it is, what you're doing, where you'd like to see it go, that kind of stuff. Okay. So I play uh, with a guy named that goes by Johnny Sincerely. That's his stage name. I met Johnny when I was working doing sound. So I, I do live sound for bands as well. Mm -hmm. So I was working and he came in as an artist and um, I really liked, you know, his style and, and um, what he was doing. Um, it was very different from what we're doing now, but um, he, he ended up working with me and doing sound. And then he subsequently started booking bands and then he, there were uh, cabaret shows happening and, and he, became the, the host. He developed this Johnny Sincerely character as, as a host for these cabaret and burlesque shows. So then when the pandemic hit and there were no shows going on, he really buckled down and just started writing songs about this character, about this Johnny Sincerely character. So, so you, the, do you, you play bass for Johnny Sincerely? I know I, I play guitar in that band. Okay. So I, okay. I, yep. Yeah, and we, we did, we did do a jam over at a buddy's house kind of before this whole thing happened. And then, once the pandemic hit and he started um, working on that character and writing those songs and then he recorded the album, he played all the instruments on the album and then he started to recruit people to be in the band. And I was the first person that he called and he said, would you want to play guitar in this band? And I had, I had just bought a Gretsch hollow body guitar, which I've always wanted. And I didn't know what kind of project I'd be playing it in, but it, it's, it's the perfect guitar for this band. Hey, very cool. So uh, why don't you kind of tell me um, what some of your favorite memories are of the period of time that, you know, you've been working in music? Um, the, for, for me, like the magic of music, it, it's 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 not about money. It, 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 it's 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 kind of about the, the, the way the arts are. And I, I would imagine like a, a, a play or a movie or whatever, like you spend all this time and all this practice. And when you practice these this music 
and you get up on stage and you nail it. Everybody in the band has their part to play and you play that song perfectly. It doesn't matter if you get money or anything or whatever. It's just the, the real magic is in all the rehearsal that's put into it. And then you put it on stage and you play that song flawlessly. That, that is like the best feeling for me as an artist. And, and there's a lot of those kind of magic moments that happen even when you're just jamming in the basement. There, there, there was a lot of that with the Dances with Worms band where we would just get in the room. We'd say, hey, how's it going? And then we would just get on our instruments and, and we would just light up. You know, we would just have so much fun just kind of jamming on a riff. And a lot of that stuff I, I recorded, it never really saw the light of day. But I do have a lot of that stuff, you know, on on uh, CDs and different different formats that I can listen back to. Um, well, so do you want to throw out some social media links? Where can people find you, follow what you're doing, and then also check out Johnny Sincerely? Um, yeah, the, the Johnny Sincerely is on Instagram and Facebook and, uh, you know, all, all the social things. Um, you can stream it on Spotify and Apple Music and stuff. Um, so that's, um, that's him. He, he did the record, but we're currently working on uh, new material and we're going to redo all those songs as the band. Um, so that's, that's the Johnny Sincerely thing. I... I am starting to do, I'm starting to write my own songs. I'm doing some solo acoustic shows. Um, I've, I've done two at the White Squirrel Bar, and I'm doing another one November 11th at the White Squirrel Bar. I'll be playing at 2 o'clock. Um, writing, uh, I've been writing songs, and I do a lot of cover tunes, so I, I'm going to do about two hours of material, and it's going to probably going to be about 10 originals, and the rest will all be cover songs. But I don't have any website or media links or any of that for my music it's just kind of like if you want to you want to hear my songs you get you have to come and see me that's where it's at currently <laughs> sure but i i am i do i do have pro tools in my basement and i do i'm kind of doing these like scratch tracks of these songs and it's mainly just so i can recruit musicians that that i can get to play with me because i eventually would like to do my own band uh well once you get there you know i'd be happy to do a follow-up interview with you you know once you get that stuff released so we can you know help promote that as well sure. um all right well so i always like to give the person that i'm interviewing the opportunity to put out their last word so what's a message that you want to throw out there that you think people should hear i think that everyone what whatever your passion is whatever you are inspired by or whatever don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it because you can um, and you just need to do it. Don't, don't let any of those obstacles that are in your brain or outside of your brain, people influencing you or you influencing yourself. That's, that's kind of, kind of one of your, you can be your own worst enemy. Just do what it is that you want, you know, want and, and your vision and, and really just go for it and don't compromise.